Welcome back to our reading. We are reading The Reluctant Dragon, which was written by Kenneth Graham in Scotland in 1898. And tonight we are reading part number seven. Well, Perhaps I have been over-credulous, said St. George. Perhaps I've misjudged the animal. But what are we to do? Here the dragon and I, almost face to face, each supposed to be thirsting for each other's blood. I don't see any way out of it exactly. What do you suggest? Can't you arrange things somehow? That's just what the dragon said, replied the boy, rather nettled. Really, the way you two seem to leave everything to me, I suppose you couldn't be persuaded to go away quietly, could you? Impossible, I fear, said the saint, quite against the rules. You know that as well as I do. Well, then, look here, said the boy. It's early yet. Would you mind strolling up with me and seeing the dragon and talking it over? It's not far, and any friend of mine will be most welcome. Well, it is irregular, said St. George, rising. But really, it seems about the most sensible thing to do. You're taking an awful lot of trouble on your friend's account, he added good-naturedly as they passed out through the door together. But cheer up. Perhaps there won't have to be any fight after all. Ah, oh, but I hope there will, though, replied the little fellow wistfully. I brought a friend to see you, dragon, said the boy rather loud. The dragon woke up with a start. I was just er, thinking about things, he said in his simple way. Very pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. Charming weather we're having. This is St. George, said the boy shortly. St. George let me introduce you to the dragon. We've come up to talk things over quietly, dragon. And now, for goodness, goodness sake, do let us have a little straight common sense and come to some practical business-like business arrangement. For I'm sick of views and theories of life and personal tendencies and all that sort of thing. I may perhaps add that my mother's sitting up. So glad to meet you, St. George, began the dragon, rather nervously. Because you've been a great traveler, I hear, and I've always been rather a stay-at-home. But I can show you many antiquities, many interesting features of our countryside, if you're stopping here any time. I think, said St. George, in his frank, pleasant way, that we'd really better take the advice of our young friend here and try to come to some understanding on a business footing about this little affair of ours. Now, don't you think that after all, the simplest plan would be just to fight it out according to the rules and let the best man win? The betting on you, I may tell you down in the village, but I don't mind that. Oh yes, do, dragon, said the boy delightedly. It'll save such a lot of bother. My young friend, you shut up, said the dragon severely. Believe me, St. George, he went on, 
There's nobody in the world I'd sooner oblige than you and this young gentleman here. But the whole thing is nonsense and conventionality and popular thick-headedness. There's absolutely nothing to fight about from beginning to end. And anyhow, I'm not going to, so that settles it. But supposing I make you, said St. George, rather nettled. You can't, said the dragon triumphantly. I should only go into my cave and retire for a time down the hole I came up. You'd soon get heartily sick of sitting outside and waiting for me to come out and fight you. And as soon as you'd really gone away, mine I'd come up again gaily. For I tell you frankly, I like this place, and I am going to stay here. And that is the end.